in this video, I'm going to teach you how to keep hens cool on a hot summer's day because boy, that summer weather is in full force here in South Florida. So without further ado, let's get into it. Well, chickens can't sweat like we can, and nor can they remove their feather jackets. So what can we do to keep them cool? A hen's normal body temperature is between 104 and 107 degrees Fahrenheit, which helps them be more resistant to cold, but the heat is another matter. High temperatures will lead to your flock becoming cranky and they won't eat as much and will drink more water, lay fewer eggs, have thin watery diarrhea and lowered fertility rates in both roosters and hens. So let's start off with the first way of keeping them cool, water baths. A shallow pan of cool water placed in a shady area is great for them to dip their feet into. The feet and legs of the chicken are one of the areas that they have to reduce their internal temperature. Once you have shown them how, they will be happy to cool their feet off. If a hen's looking listless, pale, and is panting, she may be getting heat stroke. Pick her up and dunk her in some cool water. You can submerse her up to the neck if necessary. Do this for a couple minutes, then remove her from the water and put her in a cool place. Gently towel the feathers, though be sure to leave them damp. If she is lying unresponsive and doesn't move when you prod her, you need to cool her down immediately. Try the cool water bath, making sure you get water between the feathers and onto her skin. Use cool water, not iced water. You need to bring the temperature down steadily, but slowly, especially if she's an older hen. The shock between very hot and very cold might be too much for her and cause failure of her heart. The second way to cool off your chickens in the summer is dust baths. Chickens dust bath to keep down external parasites and also to cool themselves on a hot, humid day. An extended amount of days with no rain, even the lower layers of dirt will be dry and dusty. In the morning, just before you let them out, gently water their dust bath areas so will be cool and damp later on. Alternatively, you can make a temporary dust bath in a shady area for them. If you're not sure how to do this, we put together a article on making your own dust bath. It's really easy and quick to do and the girls will thank you for it, I promise. The third way of keeping them cool is making shade. You can create shaded areas by using sailcloth, tarp, or similar. You can make a tent-like structure or extend from your run to make an awning. If you are using a tarp, this can be firmly attached to the run at the coop end. It is amazing just how much this simple measure will reduce the temperature. Not only will it protect from the sun, but the snow as well. Bushes and shrubs provide shade for your hens too. Now, if you don't have many around, try planting some by the run. You will need to keep them protected for the first year as the chickens will want to sample. I allow wildcat mint to grow around the coop. It keeps insects down, provides cover for the chicks and hens, and makes the coop smell clean and fresh. Growing vining plants on and over the run, the girls will not only benefit from the shade, but also may enjoy nibbling the leaves and flowers too. Make sure that whatever you plant isn't poisonous for them either. Another way to keep them cool is water misters. Using a misting system can cool the girls down gently. It's best to set it up in a shady area for them since the ground will retain some of the moisture, which will cool their feet. On a normal day, hens don't really care to get wet, but in the heat, they will tolerate wetness because it cools them down. Using the mister two or three times a day will cut back on the amount of water you use and be less likely to create a muddy mess in the coop. Remember, you wanna keep them cool, but do not wanna create a breeding ground for mosquitoes and disease. Another option is cooling down the coop. Inside the coop, you need to keep the poop under control. In hot weather, it pays to remove it daily. Why? Well, there's a few reasons. Number one, decomposing materials create heat, believe it or not. Number two, poop attracts flies and other insects. Flies in the coop can quickly lead to fly strike on a hen if she has a poopy back end. And number three, the ammonia fumes can actually become intolerable and honestly not good for their respiratory or eye health. Change out the nesting box material materials and coop bedding frequently during hot weather and try to keep the bedding to no more than a couple of inches deep. Do you have any lights in your coop? Be sure to turn them off during the daytime. They contribute to the heat inside the coop. Make sure there's sufficient ventilation to your coop. Now, is it stifling when you go in there? Improving the ventilation is a great idea for both summer and also winter. If you have a small coop that has a lift-off lid, open it partway with a small wooden wedge or similar. There are other simple fixes for coop ventilation depending on your type of coop. Now let's get into the feed and water. 
and we'll go through a few ways to cool them down with these two. In really hot weather, a hen's feed intake will diminish as will egg laying. The fluid intake will go up, however, as she tries to keep hydrated. So the first option you can do is cooling down their water. When filling the drinkers, add ice cubes or chunks to the water, which will help the water stay cool for longer. Even better, fill the drinkers to about one third full in the evening and put the drinkers in the freezer. In the morning, fill up the drinker with fresh cold water. The large chunk of ice will keep it cooler longer. Needless to say, place the drinkers out of the direct sun. No one likes to drink warm or hot water. If the water becomes too warm, they may not drink and get hydrated. So check the temperature of the water frequently. The next way to keep them cool is through supplements, believe it or not. In hot weather, they will drink much more, up to three cups of water per day each. This leads to diarrhea, which sluices out the unabsorbed vitamins and minerals in the food. To help them maintain healthy levels of these, add vitamins and electrolytes to their water. There are several different brands out there. The choice is yours. If the heat continues unabated for several days or weeks, you should add them to the water daily. You can also add probiotic powder too, if you wish. This will help the gut in trying to maintain good bacteria to aid with digestion. This is especially good for the very young and elderly chickens. Now, I know that really wasn't a way to keep their temperature down, but it is important actually just to keep them healthy in general to where they can tolerate the heat more because they are actually hydrated. Another option is icy treats. A favorite treat for those hot days is watermelon. Watermelon is cool and refreshing. It contains lots of water and natural fruit sugars for the ladies. You can feed it whole or make a watermelon slushy. As much watermelon as you can spare, put it in the blender until pureed. If it's a bit thick, add some more water until the consistency is that of liquid gelatin. You can either make ice cubes of the mixture or put it in a plastic bag in the freezer. When semi-frozen, remove and feed the ladies. Honestly, I have a lot of fun watching them devour this. Now, let's get into the last two. But before I do, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps us continue to grow and also continue to help us make better content for you guys. So the next option is move the coop for better ventilation. If your coop is mobile, move it to a shaded or breezy area. Improving ventilation and airflow will be beneficial in especially hot and humid climates. You can move the location of your chickens temporarily and put them back in their winter homes later on. And lastly, just pick breed friendly chickens. And what I mean by this is that you pick chickens that are just better at tolerating heat. If you're just starting, it's helpful to keep in mind that some breeds just fare better in hot climates than others. If you live in a hot climate, just consider starting your flock with chickens that are going to thrive where you live. Chickens with tight feathers do very well in regions that are warm, as opposed to bigger, fluffier chickens who are better insulated. If you're purchasing from a hatchery, you can often find information about how different breeds perform in hot and cold weather. Most hatcheries supply this information, but if you can't find it on their website or in their catalog, a quick internet search should help you find out what you need. If you like this video, please be sure to check this one out over here. That's going to do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learned something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.